Hey everyone, Dell here, and I'm just going to talk you through some of the points of finishing up your Project 3 drawing with some blending or some texturing and mark making in between what you've already done. So you'll see on the screen a speeded up version of me working through my own self-portrait drawing. And one of the things you might notice that I'm doing here is I'm adding some intermediary values in between some of the value blockings and then using either my finger or a blending stump to soften those transitions. You can, of course, leave these transitions really soft and smooth if you want something that looks very blended. Uh, I have a tendency to more often leave some degree of texture or mark making on the surface to make the drawing a little bit more personalized. As you're going, you will also be wanting to refine what it is that you have done. So if there is a shadow shape or a highlight shape that you haven't quite gotten right, you can add a little bit of extra, which you see me doing here, or you can take a little bit away. Your eraser can certainly come in handy in this respect. Uh, although with charcoal and chalk, there's um, a, pretty, a pretty good ability to draw right over the top of what you already have, which is kind of nice. It's pretty forgiving that way. You'll hopefully notice that I am working all over the drawing, so I'm not just sticking to one spot, you know, just working on the eyeball or just working on the lips. I'm kind of moving back and forth. I'm also, I don't know if you can tell this, leaning my hand right there on the hair on the left side of the drawing. So there may be places that as you work, um, just because of the nature of charcoal, do get a little bit rubbed off and you may have to go back and touch them up after the fact. Uh, when you bring your drawings to class on Monday, I will have some spray fixative there for you. For those who would like to fix the drawing, you can do that and it will help that a little bit. It will help it so that the charcoal isn't quite so likely to fall off the surface, uh, but it's not a perfect, <laughs> for lack of a better word, a perfect fix. Uh, it just, um, it helps a little bit. Uh, so right now you see me working in the hair. Uh, for those of you who have hair in your drawing, you'll want to uh, treat hair kind of more as big chunks of value that have a few little details in them. So if you can see, I kind of just created the shine at the top of my hair. That's a big thing that makes uh, hair look like hair is to have a little spot of shine there next to a darker area. But when you get into the rest of the hair, you are going to, for the most part, keep big blocks of value. So you don't want to draw every single strand because we don't see hair that way. You don't look at somebody and say, wow, look at all the strands on that person's head. Uh, you have a tendency to see kind of the overall light and shadow aspect of, of what's on their head. Um, that said, you can draw out a few little strands that will pick up the light, and you'll see me do that a little bit later. Um, looks like I went back to working at the face for a minute, so um, little details within the face that are things that you want to watch for. Uh, nostrils. Sometimes people have a tendency to make their nostrils really dark and really prominent, and you don't really want to do that. Uh, the nostrils may be relatively black, but there will probably be a fairly dark shadow close to them. They won't most likely stand out with, you know, a complete contrast to what's around them. Um, you'll notice me keep going back to the edge of the face over here. Uh, this is something I talked about a little bit in the video on shading techniques, but most of the time at the edges of your face or the edges of your neck, edges of your shoulders, you want to kind of blend along that line so it's a little bit fuzzy. It's not a super sharp line. It definitely doesn't have an outline to it. What that does when you have the fuzzy edge is it makes it feel like your face or your neck turn back in space. It's a trick that if you go and look at uh, old master paintings or something like that, you'll see for the most part that's what they're doing to help make that thing turn away from you in space. So no hard edges right around the edges. Uh, now I'm in there working on my eye. Eyes are another place that people have a tendency to get fixated on uh, and overwork. So some tips about the eyes. You never want to have an outline. 
uh, all the way around your eye, you will definitely have some dark lines probably near the eye, especially where the top of the eyelashes is or the bottom of the eyelashes. But try to think of those as distinct shapes. Uh, the eyelashes usually are thinner on the inside of the eye and get thicker as they go to the outside of the eye. If you are luckier than me and you have, you know, really long, lush eyelashes, then you can pick out a few longer eyelashes. But what they don't do is they don't make a little crown that perfectly frames the whole, for example, top lid of your eye. That's a thing that people tend to do is they draw long eyelashes that are pretty straight and they, they go out in spokes, like uh, spokes of a wheel, radial balance, if you will. Uh, instead, you'll usually pick out just a few, mostly towards the outer corner of the eye, maybe one or two facing in the opposite direction towards the inner eye. Can't really show you that on mine because, again, I don't have very nice long eyelashes. Um, the dark shadows on the inside of your eye, um, right next to your nose, are going to be very important shadows. Even if you don't have quite as much of a dark shadow under your eye as I do, it's still really important to get those dark shadows by the nose because that helps sink your eye back and make it look like there's depth going back from your nose. Again, you see me working all over and kind of as I notice something on the face or the hair or the background or body moving to that area to adjust it. Here I am going back into the hair uh, that I've been leaning on this whole time and you'll see I'm making kind of a mass of lighter area. And then I will uh, go back in and I'll end up picking out a few lighter strands. There we go. A few darker strands, a few larger strands to make it look a little bit more hair-like. Uh, if you have curly hair, you'll probably be picking out uh, a highlight on each curl. Uh, sort of like the little shine at my part. That'll be something that appears on each curl. If you have straight hair or straighter hair like mine, uh, it'll be more um, a few individual strands that catch the light. Uh, for those of you who have facial hair, a beard, or something like that, you definitely do not want to draw every strand in there. It's just going to be more an overall texture. One thing I often find helpful for something like a beard is exactly what I just did for the apron that I'm wearing there. You lay your charcoal on its side and just lightly drag it over the surface and it'll pick up some of the texture of the paper and it'll give that appearance of having kind of some texture on your face. But again, on a beard or a mustache, you could pick out a hair or two, but you don't want to pick out every one. It looks strange. You just saw me do the folds on the shirt, so try not to get um, locked in your head about, I'm going to make these look like folds. It's just like anything else. It's a light shade, shape and a shadow shape, and then some blending in between that makes it look like there are folds in the fabric. And now I'm just, again, adding some of those light details in the hair that go over the darker details of my clothes, of my neck, and so forth. Underneath the chin is another area that there's a very dark shadow that goes back. That will help, you know, project your chin forward and make it feel like there's form and depth there. Again, I've smoothed out um, a value in my hair. And now I'm going over with a few darker shapes, a few lighter strands, just to give that sense of hair falling. And then we'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. The side I'm working on now, I don't know how well you remember the photo, but it had kind of light coming through the back. So I think I go over this a, a few times to try to get that sense that there's light coming through there in the back. Make it feel like those, those strands are visible, but not overwhelming. And then I just very loosely mocked in the background. I use the background of the actual photograph. Uh, just for simplicity's sake. Some of you will be creating your own background. You might be looking at other photos for reference, and some of you are just creating a sense of light and shadow. So you see what I'm doing in the background here, where I'm adding in a little bit of dark in that space between the windows that are behind me, and a little bit of light, so there's some variation in there. It's okay to have a fairly plain background, especially if you don't have a lot of background that you're working with. But you definitely don't want to um, leave it just one solid color, pure white or pure black. 
um, that's going to be a little bit distracting to the eye. So let there be a little bit of variation in there, a little bit of blending or a little bit of mark making in order to make it more interesting. All right, and there it is. You'll see here the value blocking steps. One, two, then to three, four, pass four, pass five, and then pass five with the background, and then the final drawing as it stood at that point. Now there's still adjustments and things that I could do with my drawing. The interesting thing about a drawing like this is you could probably go on forever and make alterations, but your goal is to get it to a place where you feel happy with it, you feel it captures what you want to capture, it's got the personality that you want it to, and when you get it to that point, you are done. You, of course, do not have to be totally finished for class on Monday. You just want to get the drawing pretty close so that you and I can talk about it one-on-one -on -one and so that you can also get some feedback from your classmates. So that's it for this demo. Happy working on your drawing, and I look forward to seeing what you create. Bye, all.